So there's been a lot of talk lately about Sam Young and his movement against the current LDS practice of bishop youth interviews. In this video, I'm actually not going to go into the baseless claims that he makes against the church, which I may do in another video. Instead, I actually want to step back and make an observation about the patterns of behavior that happen when people leave the church. They kind of can be broken up into two basic camps. The first group are people who basically stop attending and essentially just fizzle out while trying to avoid visits from members of their local ward. This group doesn't cause much of a fuss in the church, and most of the time they are the people who were never really that deeply involved in the church in the first place. But that group is not super relevant to our discussion today, and usually are just the main discussion group in ward council meetings. It's another group that's relevant here. It's a group that I will call the resentful. Now, before you go and get upset for me for using a word like resentful, just know I'm not using this word to attack. I'm using it to describe. We should not for a minute discount how crushing losing your faith can be, especially when you've invested huge amounts of time, money, and all of your spiritual energy into an institution that you feel was not just mistaken, but that was actually intentionally deceitful. Some resentment is a perfectly natural reaction when you feel that you've been taken advantage of and lied to. And I'm no therapist, but I imagine that being honest with yourself about your resentment is probably one of the quickest ways to find healing. Those going through a faith crisis like this often look for help. Various online support communities have formed to help people in faith crisis. Some faith promoting, some not. Perhaps one of the most well-known of these groups is the Mormon Stories podcast community. Their founder, John DeLynn, has essentially formed a large online community for people transitioning out of the church. I actually believe that the Mormon Stories podcast was started with the best of intentions, but any interaction with the Mormon Stories podcast community will teach you pretty quickly that getting together a large group of resentful people to discuss their resentment is not a recipe for civility, rationality, and healing. And now with time, the group has essentially become the largest community of these resentful members and ex-members. So let's take a look at this group that I refer to as the resentful. There are two very different paths that people in this group take. The first and most common path is to become what I call a hater. These people leave the church and take any and every opportunity they can to jab and swing at the church. We all know these people and encounter them in online forums, family gatherings, and usually their jabs at the church are a nuisance and annoying, but we're pretty accustomed to dealing with them. But there's another path that these resentful people take that is far more subtle and more dangerous. It's the path that Sam Young, John DeLynn, Kate Kelly, and many other people like them have taken. Sam is a perfect example. Many people don't realize that in 2014, Sam Young said that he had lost his testimony. Soon after this, Sam Young became heavily involved in the Mormon Stories podcast community and posted frequently online. Any examination of these posts will make you realize that Sam is no ordinary member of the church and is only a member in the loosest sense. He rejects essentially all the central claims of the church, and most notably, he completely rejects the authority of the Twelve and the Prophet, and opposes their sustaining in stake and general conferences. Any opposed may so indicate. Thank you. The vote has been noted. Yes, he is that guy. Sam became totally incensed at the church's stance on LGBT issues. But this is what's interesting. He decided not to leave the church and just become another one of the haters, but to, as Kate Kelly advised her followers, right. Yeah, I think people should stay, but if they stay, they should raise hell. Uh -huh. Raising hell for the church. Is there any better way to describe what Sam is trying to do? You see, Sam is part of the most dangerous group of all. They don't leave the church. They stay and try and raise hell so they can make the church what they want it to be. I call this group who want to stay and raise hell the activists. And they're nothing new. The Salt Lake Tribune was actually founded in the late 1800s by a group of activist members who were later called the Godbeites, specifically to use the paper to attack the church's leadership, a tradition that the paper proudly carries on to this day. 
In fact, these insider activists go all the way back to Jude as the great apostasy was just getting started. Jude's entire letter was a warning against insiders who pretend to be faithful members, but ultimately try to divide and undermine the revealed word. Jude says, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith, for certain individuals have secretly slipped in among you, who pervert the grace of our God. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you and do not have the spirit. But wait, aren't we supposed to fight for what we believe in? Aren't we supposed to try and make the church better? Of course we are, but it's not that simple. The question is really, whose version of a better church are we going to adopt? Sam's? Mine? Yours? Ultimately, isn't Jesus Christ the litmus test and source for what the church is to be? Shouldn't any argument for changes to the church be made to show how the particular change will make the church more faithful and consistent with Christ? Let me be very clear. I don't believe in being a follower of the church. I believe in being a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm a member of the church because I believe it is his. If the church were to stop following Christ, I would leave it. So the only relevant question for a person who is dedicated to following Christ is if the church is acting consistently with his will. The reason that I find the work of people like DeLynn, Kate Kelly, and Sam Young so unappealing is because they don't even try and use Christ as the bedrock basis for their causes. They may give a little lip service to him when it's convenient, but it's super obvious that they are pushing their agenda with little to no basis or consistency with God's revealed will, because ultimately they reject the source of God's general revelations to the world. If Sam could make a convincing case that he was doing the work of Christ and not just satisfying his own resentment towards church leadership with baseless accusations, I could take him more seriously. If Christ is the one whose will the church is to perform, how can we know what Christ wants for his church? Did he set up a system for guiding his church after his mortal ministry? We as members of the restored church claim a miraculous answer to that question posed by Joseph. Do you see how this gets to the very heart of the Restoration's message? You see, if you reject the notion of stewardship and priesthood and encourage others to do the same, you are not just an unbeliever. You are an active agent against the work of the Restoration. You cannot claim to be a member of the church that is restoring these truths to the earth while simultaneously and fundamentally working against them. Furthermore, it is up to local leaders to let members know when they have gone astray and left the fold. We don't kick people out of the church. They leave on their own. And local leaders sometimes have to break the news to them so they can begin the work of helping them to come back. I sincerely hope Sam and those like him will be honest with themselves about their resentments and take the needed steps to again help move forward Christ's work in restoring his gospel to the earth. In the end, I am all for making the church better. But we must remember that we each have our own stewardship. I have mine, Sam has his, and President Nelson has his. Let's all pull together and respect our lanes as we work in our different stewardships to build the kingdom. Best wishes, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and hit the subscribe button, or visit thoughtful-faith.com. Thanks for watching.